Okay, now I've removed the cotter pin that was sitting on there, that pin right there, if you can see it. And what that's done is it, sorry, it has loosened, loosened the rod inside the engine. That little um, rod that pushes the, uh, the governor when the engine gets to a certain speed. You can see the governor mechanism behind it with my flashlight. Very difficult spot to photograph, so I apologize and please bear with me. Um, so I'm going to slide that rod out of there altogether, and um, then I'll I'll proceed to uh, hammer the uh, back side of the pin that that uh, governor mechanism sits on. Now if you look inside of the engine, you can see how I position the, the crankshaft. See the lobes on the crankshaft right there so that I have an opening for this area. And I did that by just lightly putting the flywheel and the keyway on the other side and um, rotating it because it's very difficult to rotate with your fingers and it's very sharp. So um, that's the easiest way to do it. All right, so I'm going to take that out. And I'll All right, um, to get this little rod out of the engine, the rod that sat right in there that went up through this hole, that was the um, lever for the governor, is right there. I had to um, cut a little piece off of it with a pair of giant bolt cutters. Whoops, I just lost that one. But I cut that little piece off and um, I filed what was left around the edges smooth so it would pull out of the hole uh, cleanly because it's a precision fit hole in there. And I couldn't extract it all the way because the crankshaft was in the way and the thing was just a little bit too long. So just cutting that little nib off of it gave it enough clearance to go all the way through the uh, all the way th all the way through the hole, and then I was able to extract it um, with a pair of pointy nose pliers, long long neck point pointy nose pliers. I reached in there and just gave it a tug, and out she came. Um, so now I have another hole on the top to fill, which I'm going to use a, a standard threaded plug to fill afterwards. I'm going to do all the plug filling later on. But um, that's the first step in getting out uh, uh, the um, governor control. The other thing I should mention is um, behind that little rod that I just extracted, um, sorry, this little rod right here, um, there was a washer sitting up against the uh, flat part of the engine in there, of the case. And you want to make sure that you account for all these little washers that come out. And there was one on the outside as well. So the outside one is right there and that sat on the top of the engine right there. So um, make sure that you get a hold of both of those washers and that you don't leave any uh, debris inside the engine. So um, just make sure you find the So washer. I'm just going to make sure here that the crankshaft is out of the way of the, uh, the gear so that when I drive the gear out it's not flying into anything. Behind that gear there's another little spacer washer and I want to make sure I find that after I drive out the gear. So now I'm going to put the engine down on its side and I'm going to go from the back side over here. See I've put the flywheel on just as a little tool so it's easier for me to turn the crank internally. And now I'm going to go right here, follow this little, see this little line? This little, I guess it's an oil channel line. Follow that up to this right here and um, that's what we're going to drive out with a punch and a hammer and it should come out fairly easily. That's it. That's all it takes. Very light taps to knock that out of its position. Now, if you look down in the back of the engine, I've just driven the gear out and you can see the washer is still sitting there. Now the washer, here's the gear. Put down the flashlight um, and I'll show you. There's the back of the gear and the washer sits against there now. It's still in there. So I'm going to remove that so it doesn't get caught up in the engine. And um, if you look in here, if you're wondering how this thing works, these little centrifugal weights, when the engine's turning and it gets to a certain RPM, they fly out and they have enough pressure from the RPM to lift that. You see that go up and down? And it lifts that up. And what that little thing does is it pushes on, hang on, it pushes on on this piece right here. And when this piece pushes out, it turns the lever, and when it turns the lever, it turns the governor, and the governor, where'd it go? Here it is. So there's where that little rod sits in, and then it, when it turns, it turns the governor, and it pulls the throttle. 
to a slower position to maintain RPM in the engine. Perfect for your tiller, bad for your mean go-kart machine or your doodle bug machine. So um, that's what we have to take out of here. And that's how it works, in case you're wondering. So now I'm just going to fish that out of there with a pair of pointy nose pliers or a magnet. And um, then I'm going to, I didn't see this one in here before until I got it apart. But right down there, that's the little pumper for the, uh, um, the low oil sensor. And I'm just going to remove this because it's a excess junk in the engine if it ever falls apart. Well, you know, it'll do, it'll cause a problem. So um, I may actually revise my plan of just cutting that wire and find something to plug that hole properly. Um, so I'm going to tackle that after, but for now we'll get that out of Okay, there. so if you can look inside, there's the, sorry, there's the low oil sensor, and I've already taken this bolt out. I'm using a wobble extension on the end. If you don't know what a wobble is, I'll show you here. Um, it's an extension, with, it's been tapered on the end. And when you put your socket on it, it gives it just enough room to move like that. See? So if it's um, a hard spot to get into, you can just kind of fiddle with it a little bit. So now I'm going to make a little noise here. And loosen that bolt. And I'm going to grab that with some pointy nose pliers and take that out of there. And we won't be reusing those, that's for the low oil sensor. So the low oil sensor should be loose now. And um, I'm going to get that out. but. Where the wire is on this side, I'm going to remove that nut and um, take the oil sensor out of there too and figure out a plug for there after. Okay, there's the cleaned up inside of the engine and you can see where the oil sensor was or the oil low oil sensor and inside those holes where it was bolted on, there's no need to plug those because they don't exit through the other side of the case. So they're no problem. So that's nice and empty in there, more room for oil and um, um, the uh, governor assembly has been removed so there's nothing in there there's less to break loose and get in the way of the engine if anything happens and um, very simple to take out there's the low oil sensor that's the back side of it when you look in the engine this is how it's positioned and you see that part on the outside with the with the nut on it and um, that's what plugs into your wiring harness we're not going to use that anymore and it's just like a little plunger inside of there you can see see the back side of it and it makes a contact when it goes all the way down it touches that metal and completes the circuit and away she goes when it's got oil it's normally open and when it doesn't have oil it's normally closed great idea but they just don't work in motorcycles when you lean over the oil goes away and your bike conks out in the middle of a corner so you just have to check your oil more frequently um, so anyway it looks a lot better I like that so we're ready to start putting it back together so I have a couple of plugs and um, for the engine because I made a hole over there and I made a hole in the in the top where the arm was. You can see it right there, I hope. And um, I went to Lowe's and I picked up this um, um, quarter 20 by 3 8 deep uh, set screws and they have a little Allen, Allen key head in the top and um, I'm just going to thread those right in there. It's a very soft metal case. So I shouldn't have to tap and dye it. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of Loctite and put them in and that'll be that. So those holes will be filled. Now as far as the oil sensor hole goes, I'm going to have to go to the hardware and get a, uh, a small bolt uh, the same size and a little gas proof um, rubber washer. Maybe I can use that one on here. Let's see. Yes, I can use this washer right here. I'll get the same size bolt and um, but with a head on it and then use this washer reuse this washer and then just tighten it up with a couple of bolts one uh, one uh, uh, jam bolt and then another um, locking uh, locking nut on the oh, I'm sorry jam nut and a locking nut so the two of them are there together and then fasten that up before I close the engine so since I have to go to the hardware the only thing I can do now is um, is, is put these in and then I'll be back to do the rest of the assembly